What is up, YouTube? Now, I know it's been a while, apologies for that, but I think I do have somewhat of a reasonable excuse, and that is since the arrival of my baby, my little home recording studio is now pretty much my wife's home office. So don't get too much time to create, so I thought I would invest in a new laptop so I can be a little bit more productive during the day whilst the baby's asleep. And I went for the new MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip and a 32 gig of memory. So of course, later on in the video, I'll do a little stress test so we can see just how much this beast of a machine can handle. But recently I've been getting quite a few comments on my channel asking if I would share my default project, my kind of Cubase template. So rather than share that template, I thought I would go through the process of setting up a new template from scratch. So let's just get into it. Let's load up Cubase. Wow. And you can see I'm using the Arturia Mini Fuse 1 as my sound card for this. I'm not sure if that will make any difference to the stress test later on, but thought I'd let you know. And let's create an empty project. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my mix console. So let's go visibility zones and I'm going to move my stereo out right to the right hand side so it's always there. Now the whole point of my default project is that I can create quickly and easily without having to waste any time doing all the stuff that I'm about to do now. So I basically do it one time or actually I add to it over time but you get the idea. I do it one time, it's there, it's ready, it's good to go and I can just sit down, open up Cubase, start creating and be inspired straight away. So one of the key things is of course organization. So with that in mind I'm going to start by setting up a bunch of folder tracks. And I'm going to go with eight of them for now. I'm going to name them all. Drums, bass, Harmony, Melody, Focals, FX, Utilities, and my buses. And I'm going to give these all a colour. Drums are always red, everybody knows that. Bass is always orange. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up my buses. Let's go Add Track. And group, I'm going to create outside of the folder and of course make sure everything's stereo. And what I want to do is set up a group preset. So I'm usually going to want an EQ on a group. And a limiter. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, I am a dumbass DJ by trade, so the music I make is obnoxiously loud. LOUD NOISES! So my template is set up specifically for that reason, so your mileage may vary. Of course, depending on the bus, I will want other things, but for now I just want that as my default. So I'm gonna right click and go to save track preset, and I'm gonna name this empty group and I've put an exclamation mark at the beginning of this. Actually before I do that let's give it the group colour just because. Let's save it again. Now I put the exclamation mark at the beginning so when I access my track presets you can see it appears right at the top there. Now for my default project, I like to have 10 groups or 10 buses, believe it or not. So let's just put them in. Apologies if the screen record looks a bit weird. That's just because the resolution on the screen on this MacBook is something a bit weird because it's Apple and because of course it is, why would it be regular HD or 4K or whatever? Who Anyway. So I'm going to put all of these into my buses folder, just 
so I keep everything nice and neat as so and let's name them so I want kick and bass and drum bus my drums and bass harmony bus melody bus synth bus effects bus I'm also going to give them corresponding colors, or at least colors that I understand. I'm going to go back into my visibility thing and move all my buses over to the same side as my output. So let's get into the routing of these. So my kick and bass, I'm going to root to my drums and bass. My drum bus is going to go to my drums and bass. And my drums and bass is going to go to my instrument bus. Harmony and melody are both going to go to my synth bus. Uh, my synth bus also going to go to my instrument bus as is my effects bus now my instrument bus that is going to go to my master bus and my vocal bus also I'm going to go to my master bus and then the master bus of course just goes to my stereo out now is this whole bus system overkill well if you think it's overkill then yeah it's overkill for you but for me this thing works perfectly every time now from here on in I'm not going to go into setting up every single channel because it's more or less the same thing over and over but I'll just show you one or two. So in my bus folder I'm going to add an instrument track. So I'm going to leave it with no instrument to begin with because I want to set up a preset again. And of course I'm going to want an EQ now because I like loud music I tend to go for saturators over compressors so I'm going to put one on and rather than a limiter on each individual channel I'm just going to put a clipper And let's give it a color and save the track preset. Now in my drum folder, I tend to load up my favorite drum VSTs, but everything else I tend to leave blank and just set up the default project and then just name everything and root everything. So one of the advantages of putting everything in folders is you're never really gonna to forget to root everything. So because I have this in my drums folder, And this is going to be my kick. I'm going to root it to my kick and bass. And for some reason, this is not showing up in my mixer. I'm 100% sure why. It does on my PC. Um, so I'm just going to put the visibility to the left for now. So. Let's add another instrument. This one, snare.
and this one of course gets routed to my drum bus and so on and so forth. Now I'm obviously not going to make you sit and watch me add an instrument for every single one of these channels but you get the idea with the name and structure and the root and structures so the final part of my default project I guess is my arranger. So to get to it click on this button I want to add it right to the top. Actually first I'm going to add a ruler track and I'm going to set this to seconds just so I have a time frame for my track and then I'm going to add my arranger track. Now because I make predominantly club music I tend to work in 8 bar loops and kind of 16 bar phrases I guess. So I'm going to create a 16 bar segment and I'm going to overlay that with an 8 bar section and then I'm going to duplicate this out another 9 times. And I can't explain the psychology behind this but when I set up an arranger track like this and label it as I do it just motivates me to complete a full track rather than get stuck in these like little 16 bar 8 bar loops. So let's go to naming them. So the first one called intro and this little section here is called A because I can't think of anything better. Now this name of scheme is somewhat arbitrary, it's just having it there lets me know that something has to change during this section. So yeah, I have my little intro section that is kind of the same for 16 bars except the second 8 bar has a slight variation on it just to keep things interesting. Same with my intro drop which is I guess my way of teasing what the drop's going to be. Again, 16 bars long but the second 8 bars has a slight variation call this next section full because that tends to be the full drop. Next I have a breakdown section and a build drop climax which is where the G spot is and then start to chill things out before the outro. And let's just get rid of that. And yeah, that's pretty much my default template. So to save it, I'm going to go File, Save as Template, and let's go Template 2023. And now every time I open up Cubase in the hub, you can see we have Template 2023 there. And yep, everything looking fine and dandy. So let's get into the stress test and see what we can do on this machine. So, so what I'm going to do now is actually grab a completely blank project. And let's use my empty instrument template. And let's open up Omnisphere. And then I'm going to grab a preset, just a random preset from the hardware library. Because I know these do tend to be quite CPU intensive, at least on my PC. Let's make it play a chord. If I can get used to this uh, option command thing. I'm not going to play what the chord is because I'm going to get crazy. So I have Omnisphere with Pro Q3, which won't be doing anything. Saturn 2. And let's change this to a limiter. because limiters tend to use up a little bit more CPU. Let's check the settings of the sound card, see where we're at. I'm going to set ASIO guard to normal. And let's bring up the control panel here. So, yeah, let's set it down to, I don't know, 128. That's kind of... Um, usable for most people, I reckon. Uh, let's check the CPU meter down here. So let's see what happens when we just play one. Right, and let's go for it. 
Okay, let's see how we do with five. Hmm. Okay. Let's go with ten. Wow. Okay. <laughs> let's go with twenty. Okay. Let's go with 40 for all the people who are using 40 instances of Omnisphere in their tracks. Okay, as your guard's gone a bit crazy. Let's uh let's just go with another 10. Okay, maybe another 10. <laughs> okay, Let's see if we're getting starting to spike out a little bit there. Okay, that's too many. Okay, it looks like I've just about found the limit there, but if I want to, I can run 50 instances of Omnisphere, all playing a triad, all with an EQ, a saturator, and a limiter on. So do with that information as you please. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Hope you found that useful. Like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully with this new computer, I can be a bit more productive and get a few more videos out over the next couple of weeks. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Peace.